Now, let me introduce you to a brand new guest. Sean, we met each other earlier on today. Good Hi, to see Dave. you. Nice to see you. Welcome to, uh, to Ideal World. Thank you. Now, this collar, you think a dog collar is a dog collar is a dog collar. This collar is called the Canny Collar. It's been invented, what, for about five years, did you say? It was uh, invented uh, in 2001, I believe, by the inventor Brian Smith, right. a genius horseman who lives up in the Scottish Highlands. And uh, he felt that uh, some people were a little bit harsh on horses when they were logging. And he came up with a bitless horse controller. And he scaled it down for the dog. Mm -hmm. And his wife said, Brian, that's uncanny. It works a treat. And uh, that's how they came up with the product. Now, just to let you know, Sean is a dog trainer, and this is a product that is designed to actually alleviate the problem of the dog pulling. And we've all been there. I've taken some, some strays out and things like that, and they've been taking me for a walk for miles, not the other way around. And the way it works is, unlike others that are on the market, this actually has got a little strap that goes over the nose of the dog, just here. I don't know how close we can see. We've only got the black one available here. It's difficult to maybe see on the black dog there. But there's the strap that goes around the nose. That is actually connected to the collar around the the neck and if your dog should pull just a little gentle tug on that makes his head dip down that's exactly right that's how it works it's very very simple it's and, and that's the great thing about it it's so simple to use it's kind it's safe it's effective it's comfortable for the dog and um, what you're doing is you're lowering the dog's head down gently and then as soon as the dog stops pulling or your momentum takes you past him as he slows up his head comes up and that all goes loose, and that gives him an instant signal that he's doing the right thing. So you're ah. not yanking the dog's head to one side, or, and this won't ride up into the eyes because it can't. This has got to go down through this yellow guider here. And uh, Sarah's quite correct. We, we don't want to be yanking dogs around with a, no. with a choke chain on. Well, if I just show you here, it's difficult to see actually on the, on the dog itself. <laughs> and um, we've only got the black available here at the moment. But this is a, a wonderful brand new idea. That's obviously how you fix the, the collar around the neckline area. But then these are the straps that actually go over the nose. Is that right? Uh, well, what happens is... Or maybe I, you can show us on this. Yeah, thing. if I take this off here and we go from a, a standing start. Mm -hmm. um, if I take this... Oops. There we go. It's, as you say, Dave, it's a basic dog collar. It's nice and padded and soft. Mm -hmm. So when you put it on the dog, you would put it on, as you would do any other collar, slightly higher up the neck with right. the buckle at the back of the head. Yeah. So I turn around, perhaps we can get a better view there. And, and it, it, it does sit slightly higher up than the resident collar would do. Mm -hmm. We bring these out of the back here. Just ignore these little carabiners for now. I'll explain what those are for in a second. Clip your lead to those two D-rings there. Right. And uh, if we come around the front here, underneath, this is your connection to your dog's nose. Ah, so right, I get if you. you leave that little yellow guy behind, and then if we pop that over his nose, mm -hmm. when he's pulling, little gentle pressure there is going to drop his head. As soon as he stops pulling, his head will come back up. Now, obviously, it's a bit like us whenever we put something new on. Maybe when we have a new tooth fitted, fitted at the dentist, or we put our watch on we haven't, we haven't worn for a week or something. It feels a little bit strange. So your dog will have to maybe take a day or two to get used to it. But think about it. If that is going to be a thing of the past, the dog taking you for a walk rather than the other way around, and this has to be, it's certainly the gentlest way I think I've ever seen of, of, of you know, not harming the dog at Absolutely. all. I don't, I don't like these choker chains and stuff like that. I'm not a big fan of those not, at, all. Not at all. What you've got here is just a a little way that if he does pull a little bit, his head goes down. When he stops pulling and adopts the right speed, his head goes back up again. That's yeah. teaching him that's the best way of walking. It's designed to teach him to walk. I mean, most people generally just leave it on like this because it's loose, the dog is comfortable, he's walking by your side. Mm -hmm. Some people will say, I'd like to train him to walk on a regular collar and lead. So I, I suggest, well, walk him like this for a week and then slip that off pull that through, you're now on a regular collar and lead. Right. If he's walking well, great, you're making progress. If, if he, he needs a bit more help, into bad habits. you can pop that back on. If you want to let him off the lead for a run around, this is what these two little carabiner clips are for here. You cross that round behind his head, mm -hmm. and those two carabiners will clip together under there. Oh, okay. Everything's out of the way. There's nothing dangling down. If he runs off into a wood, he's not going to catch his collar on a, a branch or anything. So. It's very safe. Um, the RSPCA uh, recommend it. We have it. It's used by the Association of Guide Dogs for the Blind. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't be using it if it wasn't completely safe. 
comfortable. Exactly. And, and also, it's got a lifetime guarantee as well. Yeah. Now, obviously, if the dog chews it to bits, that's not covered. But any mechanical <laughs> defect in the actual collar itself. Now, our resident vet that comes into Animal Bargain shows is Charles. And Spud, uh, his, uh, his sidekick, is here as well. So if we bring both of you in, guys. Spud's actually modelling the collar for us as well. It's a little bit unfortunate that all of our dogs here are quite dark in colour because uh, let's have a little look at Spud at the moment. I'll just go over to, to see Charles. Good to see you again, Charles. Welcome nice to see you, Dave. And good to see you, Spud. How are you, matey? Happy as ever. Yeah, absolutely. Now, he's got the actual um, the, the canny collar on at the moment. What's your take on what we're looking at here? Uh, um, I, I think they're fantastic. Um, you know, Spud is, uh, um, you know, not worn one until he had one on for the first time last week. Mm -hmm. uh, and you were saying then, you know, they take a while to get used to it. Within five minutes, uh, you know, he was, he was used to wearing it. Um, and certainly when he's, you know, when I'm walking around with him, uh, you know, it works really well. And mm. I think what they're saying, the way that it, 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 it attaches over the nose, and then you're, you've got control of them sort of simply behind, you know, behind their head. I think sure. that's the key thing. And also the thing is, when he does um, walk better, and maybe you're thinking, well, I don't necessarily need to have the strap over his snout anymore. You can it's just very easy. It. It's very easy just to, uh, you know, Take it off like that. I mean, you know, very quick and easy. Yeah. Um, and then it's more like a regular collar. So you've still got a collar that's not going to be redundant. You're not going to be, you know, throwing your money away or something like that. It's a collar that you can use regularly. But if he does slip back into bad habits or whatever, you pop it back just, on. You just loosen, loosen off the strap, pull it through from the from the from the yellow retainer, slip it over the nose, and you've got that that restraint over the bridge of the nose. But the, the, I think the key thing I really like, I guess, from perhaps a, a vet point of view, um, you know, I do see people coming in using head collars, uh, and many of them because they of where they attach, they tend to ride up Need, um, into the because eyes. of where they're being pulled from yeah. and they ride up into the eyes and that can cause uh, you know obviously a significant amount of discomfort watery eyes and, and, and so on well this is literally moving the the nose of the dog down pulling the nose down ever so slightly we're talking about just quite simply a gentle tug that's all we have to do we're not talking about a violent jerk or anything like that and I must admit years ago when I worked in pet shops and people used to be coming in and buying choker chains I used to have a real th issue about them I didn't like them at all for obvious reasons um, I don't know whether you use that or whether you're thinking about another way of, of, of making sure your dog does what you want it to do. But this is a very, I'd say, friendly and very gentle way of the dog getting the message. I, mean, I think, as Sarah was saying earlier, um, dog training is very much now about uh, rewarding mm. uh, uh, behaviour you want to see. Um, it's all very sort of uh, passive. It's non-confrontational. Uh, you're not bullying the dog uh, no. to do what you want it to do. Uh, you know, you're encouraging them to do what you want, what, what you want it to and do. And when you see dogs like Spud, you see Jackson, you see Kite, they, they all love life so much. They they love coming in here, they love playing their games, they love kind of being with their owners, and that's really what anyone could ever possibly want from a four-legged friend. And, you know, this is, um, again, an ideal solution. Now, we're going to talk to Sean about sizes, so I'll come back to you in a minute, Charles, if that's all right. Thank you, Spud. Um, let's quickly go back. Let's talk about the sizes. We've got sizes two, three, four, and five. So a lot of people thinking that I can relate to this. I want to get one of these collars. I don't know what okay. size to go for. Um, we generally recommend measuring the neck, but as a, as a guide, um, a size two would generally fit a terrier-type dog, like a Jack Russell. Mm -hmm. A size three would be, uh, this is a size three on Stan here. Stan used to really be a bad puller, but he's uh, fantastic <laughs> to take for a walk now. Uh, Cocker Spaniel. Size four would be German Shepherd Lab, and size five would be a Rottweiler. And between two and five, you're covered about 90% of all breeds and sizes. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a size to fit every breed and size of dog. Okay, so size two, right the way up to size five. Lifetime guarantee as well. It's been difficult to show you, obviously, on our black model and on, on Spud, because he's a dark chocolate brown lab, but this is the actual color itself it's really well manufactured and made it's wonderfully soft but incredibly strong all the eyelets as you can see there are rivets so you're not going to end up with the uh, material tearing or anything like that but this just to kind of explain it in a nutshell this is the collar obviously that you attach your lead to there and it's this strap at the front that goes over the dog's nose so that's basically how when you pull the dog back slightly it moves the nose down it dips the head the dog realizes oh i'm doing something wrong here and then as soon as he starts to walk properly at the right speed next to you yeah. he's got the freedom so he gets the message or she gets the message really quickly and you enjoy your walk a lot more it, you, you, it makes walking your dog a pleasure yeah. and, and people that, that buy this they'll walk into the pet shop and the dog has become a nightmare for them on the lead and like, frankly it can be the difference between somebody giving the you mm. and enjoying them in their own home. We do a lot of work with rescue shelters who tell us the main, one of the main reasons that people come into the shelter is because their dog is a nightmare on the lead. Mm. And, and we've worked with them and helped to rehome a lot of dogs up there because of this. Well, looking at the lab that we've got on the actual information just here, obviously this is the black collar that we're showing you today. And on a lighter dog, you can see just how it works. So conventionally, a collar around the neck, there's the band that goes over the nose. If your dog is behaving itself after a week or two or three or four weeks, you can then take that off if you don't feel that you need it anymore. But if he 
coffee maybe slips into bad habits again. You can easily just literally put that over the nose. And it's, it's not uncomfortable at all. It's just sending them a little gentle Absolutely reminder. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's, and the principle will be very familiar to horse owners because if you're leading a horse and the horse's head is here, it makes sense to attach something here. Mm. But a jockey, when he's above the animal, controls the animal from behind the head. And this is the same principle. Your dog is down here, you're up here. It's just very simple. Mm. And these have been so successful as well. Um, it's been featured, I know it's been featured on Dragon's Den. Right. Uh, you've got a, a, a real pedigree with this, and, and animals the length and breadth of the country are already using these canny collars. It's the first time we've actually had them on our Animal Bargain show. So if maybe you're looking at uh, ways of keeping your dog close to you, so it's not pulling you, taking you for a walk, this could be, I, I, I reckon it's the friendliest, it's the friendliest way of getting your dog to do what you want him or her to do. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, no, I'm really one, one other by yeah, it because I've seen other uh, leads on the market. Not that they're not, not good, but I see the dog's head being pulled to one side. And, you know, just a gentle tap down seems yeah. to be more friendly. It, it, and, it, and for the vast majority of dogs, it's all you need. And, and we said to ourselves, we're dog trainers. It was our natural uh, route, if you like, to go into shelters and say, we used to go in actually and say, bring us the three worst dogs mm -hmm. that you've got and we'll help you to rehome them. And their jaws would hit the floor and we and we did and we have several videos uh, of dogs that we've re that they were in there for two or three years and we were they were rehomed a month or two later so I mean I know it's a, a chicken and egg question but how long do you think it would be for someone who's got a dog that's pulling at the moment how long would it be before you, they start to notice a difference using this it all depends on the individual dog and the individual owner uh, with the vast majority of dogs it's very, very quick. We, we, we do demonstrations at, uh, at shows and we'll get people to come in, we'll fit them up with a collar, we'll walk them off and within five minutes mm -hmm. they're generally walking nicely. Can you just ever so quickly show us again how it works? Sure. What's the canny collar all about? Sure. It's to stop your dog pulling on the lead, which is the most common problem that people have with their lead. Mm -hmm. It's a very simple idea. It's all it is, is a collar with, we call this a slip line. This is the direct connection between your lead and your dog's nose. Right. And if I take it off here and take that off, mm -hmm. it's a normal collar. Yep. Nice and padded. Nice and comfy. Nice and comfy. And you pop that on like so. And bring these two out of the back. Mm -hmm. And as I say, don't attach the lead to these carabiners. That's very important. Those are only for if you're letting the dog off lead. They won't take the strength right. and the strain. That's where your lead goes. Bring this out. Slide the yellow toggle back. That's important too. Make sure that that guy stays underneath his... Otherwise that would scratch the nose, wouldn't it? Uh, no, it, it just wouldn't be as effective. Right, okay. it's, uh, it, and, and this is designed to move freely. It's not going to restrict ah, your you. dog in any way because mm -hmm. the idea being that there's a free movement there. Mm -hmm. He's not restricted and dogs accept this. They don't have lots of straps coming down here mm -hmm. which can be uncomfortable. So it's only one strap going over the dog's nose and dogs tend to accept that a lot more and, As we said before, readily. do bear in mind, obviously, this is going to be a new way of going for a walk. They're not going to be used to having that over the nose. So it may take a day or two to get used to it, but they will get used to it and you'll then soon have the benefit of having a dog by your side that isn't pulling you for a walk. You're taking each other for a walk, basically. Seventeen ninety nine. Sean, thanks ever so much. Thank you very much. Brilliant product. Thank and you. we've got every size from size 2 up to size 5. Size 2 basically is a terrier size. Size 5 will be a Rottweiler size. Yeah. And then you go down in between. Yeah. 180 018. Now I bet you're a load of people.